All right, we are back guys. I want to do a breastfeeding video because after the last video giving the tips about breastfeeding and how it helps shrink your uterus faster, um, I did get a lot of people DMing me asking about breastfeeding and that it's new to them and that they don't really have anyone to ask. So I figured doing a video would be very helpful. I'm going to go through everything because I have experience. Lila was really difficult, but I learned from her a lot that I was able to use on him and he is a little pro and it's making my life so much easier. So the first thing we're gonna go over is how do you even get started doing this? Um, luckily, some babies are pros at it. If yours is not gonna be a pro at it, there are tricks you can do um, to get them started. Now the first thing, we're gonna use Curious George here. He even has a Christmas outfit. <laughs> um, the first thing you wanna do when you go to breastfeed your baby is, you, the biggest mistake is people put their baby like this and expect them to turn their head that way. It's not bad, but for a newbie, um, it might be a little bit harder for him and his neck. You want to completely turn him so it's chest to chest. Um, and then when you go for the breast, his top lip, that's where you wanna put the nipple. So you're going to tilt his head back a little bit and then put your nipple right on his top lip. And my little trick is I will usually pull his chin down from here because what you wanna see is you wanna see this lip kind of like a fish mouth. You wanna see it like roll down. So I'll kind of just help by doing that. Um, and make sure that he takes in more than just the nipple. You're gonna want him to have some of your areola in your mouth as well. So when you see his mouth on his or her mouth on the nipple, you want to also almost not see your areola, unless you have a very large one, but you do want to see that he's taking in both the nipple and that because Technically, the nipple is going all the way down to his throat. So if he just has your nipple in your mouth, not only is it gonna hurt really bad, but he's not latching on. He's not gonna get the milk he needs. Um, so that's just beginners how to, how to do it. Um, then there's also positioning, because for some people, positions are very different. He's doing the traditional, so I do have him chest to chest. You can do the football one, or you can put a pillow and have him latch on like this. I've seen a lot of moms do it. I tried with him, he doesn't like it. Um, so that didn't quite work for me. You could also lay down on your bed flat and put him on your chest. He doesn't really like being on his tummy, so that didn't work for me either. And then another thing you can do is lay on your side, whichever side you're going to feed from, and have him there. So like if I were to lay down sideways here, I would have him and then the other side. You could do that if you're co-sleeping at night. Um, so those are just ways you could do, you can breastfeed, kind of experiment with them, find out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, now, how do you know whether he has a good latch or a bad latch? A good latch, which I have my bullet points, I kinda wanna keep everything organized, so let me check my list really quick. <laughs> so number one, which I already talked about, is the fish lips. You want to see his lip turned over. Um, and then you also want his chin and nose to be pressed up against your breast. If they cannot breathe, they will move away. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But the nose and the chin should be pressed up. If it's not and all he has is your nipple, it's gonna hurt. So it literally needs to be smushed. <laughs> You'll see it. Um, but you wanna have fish lips. I don't see his top lip, but worry about the bottom lip being turned over. That's how you know he's getting a really good sucking. And sometimes they'll even do the double chin thing and that's how you know they're really deep in there. Um, milk on the sides of his mouth when he's sucking. That is a sign that he's one, latching good, and you've got good milk coming out. Um, three, he should be latching onto more than just your nipple, so you want to make sure that you can barely see your areola or just a little bit of it, and that way you know he's getting more than just your nipple. Um, four, you wanna hear them suck and swallow. You're gonna hear it very, it's like a rhythm, like, of uh, repetition, so you're gonna hear the suck and the swallow, the suck and the swallow. Um, you need to hear that to know he's drinking. Um, another one, a little bit of tenderness is normal when they first latch. So when they start to suck and you're about to get the letdown happen, you're gonna feel a little bit of, ooh, this kinda hurts a little. Um, and then it'll go away and you won't feel any pain or tenderness. And then lastly, 
you should feel that your breasts are um, softer. So if they still feel very hard, that means he either didn't get a good latch or maybe he just wasn't on it for long enough. But normally if they're hungry, they're gonna be on it for long enough that you should feel your breasts soft enough. Um, signs your baby's not latching well is kind of the opposite of everything I just said. But um, most importantly, if you hear licking and smacking, um, that means they have not latched yet. You want to hear the swallow. So you're going to you're going to hear them pull draw it in and swallow. Uh, but if they're, they're smacking their lips around a lot and they don't really have the latch, then you know that they're not really doing much. Your breasts still feel full by the end of the feeding session. Your baby's fussy. Um, most of the time a good session ends with them pulling off your breasts, not you pulling them off your breast. Um, he should be kind of milk drunk, he or she should be milk drunk. If you're taking him off the breast because it's just not working or you're frustrated or they end up getting off because they're frustrated and they're crying, that means they probably didn't have a good feeding session. They always want to come off on their own feeling satisfied. Um, and then terrible nip pain, nipple pain that worsens and doesn't improve. Now, this is an important part because a lot of people will tell you, you shouldn't feel any pain. This is not true. Not if you're talking about the first few days. The first few days, you will feel pain. Um, not everybody, maybe if you have more sensitive nipples. I know I do. My husband knows I do. <laughs> he yells at me. <laughs> he wishes they were not as sensitive as they are. I know I have very sensitive nipples. So it takes about four to five days for my nipples to get used to somebody constantly sucking on them, <laughs> you know? So it's normal in the beginning. But once those four or five, maybe six days, if they're super sensitive, um, they should regulate. No more, um, what is it called? No more scabbing, no more dryness. They should look normal again. Um, if after that time frame you're still getting it and it's only getting worse, then you have a problem and it's either baby not latching well, well, it is baby not latching well, so he's probably just sucking on your nipple and it's really hurting. But if we're talking about the getting used to it, that's normal. Um, my tip is ointment after every single feeding until you no longer need it. Um, I don't, I didn't need it anymore, so I stopped using it. This is the nipple cream I'm using. It's all organic, because obviously they're gonna go back and eat, so you don't want something on your breast that is not good for baby. Um, and in going. like four or five days, I used like a pretty big chunk, and now I don't need it at all. Um, so you're gonna probably need it just in the beginning, and then you're, once your nipples regulate, it's like, it's fine. You don't even feel it anymore. <laughs> Um, so that's the only one that if you see online, everyone, even my midwife is like, you should feel no pain. And I'm like, well, in the beginning, I should feel some pain, right? Because they're not used to so much sucking and so much aggravation and hardening and, you know, they're just going through a lot. Um, so it's kind of normal to feel that for some people. Um, now, things that are different from that your letdown is too fast say your letdown is too fast how do you fix this because your baby is choking on your milk and he's not eating properly um that could be really frustrating well something my midwife said you can do is kind of cut your breast in half pretty much and keep that pressure which would slow down the letdown and then you can take it off um i didn't end up using it because kai was very smart and he learned how to work around it because i have super fast letdown um but i'll explain what he does in a little bit another thing you can do is lay on your back and let gravity do its thing so if you lay on your back the letdown is going to obviously be slower because you're not upright where it could just fall out of you um baby kai has is extremely smart and what he does is he latches sucks two or three times pulls away he kind of like lets it go down, goes back, and he does that like four or five times, and then he latches officially, and you hear the suck and swallow. So he knows that, I mean, it sucks because it's a really big mess, because once he latches, it's like your milk is going everywhere down his neck and everything, but that's how he copes with a really fast letdown. Um, those other two tips, you can try them out. If you have your own suggestions, comment below, you know, for anyone who did have a fast letdown and did things that were helpful, I'm sure everyone could use this advice right now. In letdown, um, you mean pouring out? Let down, well, most girls will know what this means. Let down means how quickly your milk comes out. Um, so my milk is coming out really fast, but he's learned how to cope with it in his own way. 
Um, now say your letdown is too slow. Mine was too slow with Lila. Like it would take forever and she would get frustrated, but I kind of dreaded feedings with her because she was so difficult to feed. And I think that that's what got in the way because if you feel any anxiety, fear, embarrassment, anything that puts you, takes Stress. you out of ease and, and just makes you feel uncomfortable, it's going to slow down your letdown. Your body has a fight or flight instinct. And so like if you feel any sense of, you know, oh no, something wrong is happening or, or you feel some something just is off, your letdown will slow down. Um, and this, that that's what you have to do is pretty much find a way to de-stress or find a way to be calm, take in a couple breaths or remove yourself out of a situation that's making you feel that way. So if you're breastfeeding in front of someone that you don't want to be breastfeeding in front of, go in a different room, you know, or, you know, like if you know your kid usually has a hard time, try to, you know, talk to yourself about how it's going to be a great session and pump yourself up for it. And that way you're not like coming into it with fear and your letdown is slowing down. It was funny because he was sleeping and you were ready to feed him and he just made a sad face and you just started like, dripping. Oh, and then I just started dripping all over the place. I'm like, geez. <laughs> uh, with her, I don't think it happened like no. that at all. He she just has more to strict. make a little noise or I gotta think, oh, I think I should probably feed Kai and then I just look down and it's already coming out. I'm like, don't even think right now. <laughs> but I think because it was your first with Lila, it was more stressful. Yeah, it so. was a lot more stressful with him, with her, with him it's not. So um, that's just the thought. Also, there could be other factors like if you smoke or if you drink a lot, that can make your letdown a lot slower. Um, and then if you've had a breast augmentation where any nerves were damaged or milk ducts were damaged, which I will get to that at the end of the video. So if you had a breast augmentation or you have questions about that, I will get to it. But let me finish with every all the bullet points I have first. Let me get Kai his pacifier. And also too much adrenaline can make a, let, a slow letdown. So just, I guess, calm. Think calmly but positively when you start to breastfeed just to make it a little bit easier. Um, and then a little tip, just wipe your nipples dry before you cover up. Um, this will help save your nipples from getting raw and just feeling uncomfortable or sticking to your garments. Let them air dry. Or the ointment. Or wipe them. Yeah, or you can use the, the ointment. But once you're over the ointment, like I'll just sit there, lubes out and everything, just waiting for them to air dry um, to make sure that I don't aggravate my nipples or anything. Um, another tip I want to talk about in this one, oh, I wish I had known. I had a hand pump that I used for Lila and I did like it a lot and I bought it for him too that I was going to to use but I bought a suction pump let let me get it okay so this is the one I had which was a manual pump that I used for Lila um, and I did like it but the only thing with it is it's not hands-free so it makes things a little difficult especially if they're not latching well it's less stress um, well. it's this one is less stress mm -hmm. so you just kind of suction it onto your boob and you ain't got to worry about anything it draws a little bit of milk out so it catches that milk that naturally falls as he's latched on. Once he latches, you'll notice your boob starts to leak the other one. So it catches that, but because of the suction, it also takes a little bit extra out. So every time I feed him, I get about an ounce from the other breast, which is really nice because you're trying to, you know, build up your milk stash for any emergencies or if you ever need a bottle, feed him for any we didn't reason. didn't think it was going to work that good. I didn't think it was going to work that good. And the first time I tried it, uh, it didn't, I don't know why it didn't work. I don't know what, maybe I did it too late and I didn't really get much milk and I thought it was a waste, but I was like, you know what, let me try it one more time. And I'm like, oh, it works so good. So had I known, I wouldn't have even gotten this one. The little breast shields didn't work for me. And I think that's more of a, your breasts get engorged and then they are just naturally letting out all the milk, whereas mine don't quite do that. He needs to be latched on for them to really be pouring. Like I'll leak a little if I hear him cry or something, but not enough to save it, like in one of those things. Um, so this one was the most handy for me. I highly suggest it. Another thing, um, and this was a huge one. If your baby is uh, moving their head violently back and forth, on your nipple <laughs> they're rooting they're trying to find your nipple it seems obvious to you because you're like it's right there what are you doing 
but um, usually your nipple is not standing out very much once you know you have it tucked away and pressed up against your bra it'll flatten a little bit and then it's harder for them to find it um, two things you can do here you can sandwich the boob I sandwich the boob and it helps so you can just press your boob like down and then it'll make the nipple come out and he will be able to latch on that worked like a charm for me because he would do that so much and you'd be like it's right there <laughs> you know and you'd go crazy so i would sandwich it um and that works for him really well but you could also use this which you can pump a little bit and draw out your nipple naturally and it'll be easier for him to find it um so if your kiddo is doing that you just got to assist them they're newborns they're new to this they won't, you won't have to do it forever, but that's where this also came in handy because I couldn't start pumping and I knew that I needed to pump as soon as he latched or else I don't get very much milk and I'm trying to really build up my stash. But I had to keep assisting him by sandwiching my breast and helping him find the nipple. Um, this one, you just put it on and then you assist him and you don't even have to touch it. It's doing its thing. And the next thing you know, you already have an ounce coming out of here. So that's another reason why I liked it, it's hands off. But uh, that's my other tip if he is doing that violently. Eventually it does go away and they become super pros at like finding your nipple and knowing how it all works. <laughs> I had to take a break because he got hungry. Um, but I just wanted to show you, this is kind of the milk amount you'll get from your natural letdown. Um, my midwife did give me a free electric pump, but I'm probably gonna give it back to her because I don't, I'm not gonna use it because I work from home. So there's no reason for me to have to pump. I'm just trying to save what it would already naturally fall out or leak all over my bra and stash it. So I do it every single time I breastfeed. Um, I get this to an ounce. This is a little less than an ounce, but that's because he's been cluster feeding. So he's been feeding every hour for the past three hours. So obviously you're not gonna get as much, but if he takes a longer break, two, three hours, then I get a full ounce. Um, it adds up, mustache is looking good in the freezer. Uh, but anyways, I think that wraps it up. I just wanted to give you guys a couple tips, things like this godsend. <laughs> um, I absolutely love it. Just things I've been using. And then back to the wrap because I did mention this wrap in my last video and I did absolutely love it and I still do. However, um, I wanted to see if I can get a waist trainer on. I didn't think I would be able to get it on that soon. I'm two days shy of two weeks postpartum. Let me put like advertising my milk to you guys um but i happened to be able to get it on on the first one obviously um i'm i was able to get it on the third before i got pregnant we'll see how long it takes to get down there but this one was great at first because there's no way i was going to be able to put this one on and i'm still going to use it because i can bring it down to the bottom here as well because I want to kind of even out the whole thing. You do get a little bulge over here. So um, I'll just cycle off and on. I'm gonna link them. They're both very inexpensive. If you do want to get yourself like a more serious waist trainer and this one has like little, um, what are they? It's just like metal, not metal, plastic. Not metal, yeah, like they kind of hold the form better than this one. Um, so we're gonna wrap it up. Nope. It was longer, no nope. we're not? We're not. The boobs. What about the boobs? Happy in the boob job. Oh, okay. Let me soothe him and then we'll jump into that. Now, I've been getting a lot of people asking about can you breastfeed with a boob job with a breast augmentation? And yes, you absolutely can. Is it safe? Yes. I think people have this idea that your implant is sitting with all the milk surrounded around it. It doesn't work that way. Her body is made of many different um, organs and tubes and your milk ducts are little tubes that um, release milk from your nipple. It's not like your milk is sitting inside the implant or with the implant. And depending on how you got them done, mine is behind the muscle, which completely keeps them away from the milk ducts. It doesn't even press up against the milk ducts. Um, but if you are considering a breast augmentation, which people have been asking more for that reason, that purpose, can you breastfeed? Yes, but there are things that you need to consider, like incision. You cannot get an areola incision and expect to breastfeed with no issues. So if you do want to get a breast augmentation and still breastfeed and have kids in the future, you wanna get it under the breast. That is the safest place to get it without ruining any milk duds because the milk duds are around your nipple, your areola. So the incision, 
Secondly, the concern for some people um, when the implant sits um, in front of the muscle, not behind the muscle, is that it is pushing against your milk ducts, which could um, stop the flow, slow down the flow, or altogether kind of trap the milk, and then you can get, what is that infection? Uh, they told me about it in the hospital. Oh, I have never gotten we'll it, it but I'll write it that you can get that as well if your implant is in front. Now I wouldn't even suggest getting it in front. Yes, the recovery time is a little bit faster by like a smidge, but behind the muscle provides a more natural look. Um, and then yeah, keeps the implant far away from your milk duds. So I would just do it that way anyways, if you want a more natural appearance. Um, but to sum it up, it is perfectly safe. There's actually a study been done and I have talked uh, lengthily about this with my um, surgeon and more silicone is found in a baby's bloodstream who drinks formula than one who gets breastfed by a mother who had a breast augmentation so <laughs> it's not the baby is not gonna have more silicone because of you having silicone in you um, so it's not really a concern that you need to worry about uh, breast is best and I'm not saying that because I'm anti formula formula is fortified just like cereal is fortified and I love cereal for Lila because sometimes you know if you want to make sure they're getting the extra nutrients you can give them cereal something they love and tastes good and you know it's fortified so I'm not bashing formula but if you can breastfeed there are a lot of benefits to breastfeeding for both you and baby which is why I really like to push breastfeeding but I understand for some women it just doesn't work you know there are issues at hand so I get that um, but yeah, I just wanted to clear that up about breast implants. Yes, you can still breastfeed. Woohoo! Now we're done? Yes. I got mama brain, so I'm like, check. I need my check off and him to tell me things. But anyways, I hope this video was helpful. I really wanted it to be detailed and helpful for you guys. Also, if you really, really want to breastfeed and you are having problems, try to get a lactician. You know, when I went to the hospital, there was a lactician that came and checked up on me a couple times. First, she put him on my breasts right away after he came out of me uh, and made sure to tilt his head. And she's like, wait, you got this. You're a pro. He latched right away. And I'm like, yeah, my second time. First First time she made me bleed instantly the minute I put her on my breasts I'm like so it's just knowing now um, but then she came in later in my room and then asked me if I had questions take advantage of that definitely try to breastfeed as much as possible in the hospital and ask your questions there but if not there are lacticians that can come to your house and um, just ask around and see that the hospital I went to was amazing um, uh, it was advocate Condell Condell super great people oh my god I just love the atmosphere if I have another kid I am I have to do it in a hospital because I will get into this uh, when I go through the birth story but it's just my body has mm. ran into some issues and I can no longer I need assistance so if I were to have another kid I would have to do it in a hospital and that would be my hospital choice for sure supportive amazing women in that hospital but anyways Get yourself a lactation nurse. You're gonna be so happy you did it. Your bounce back is gonna be faster. So many health benefits. Breast cancer, it lowers your risk like crazy, but baby stays healthier, less infections, less sickness. Do it for both of you. Anyways, I'm gonna end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have questions, comment below. If you have advice, comment below. If you're doing something that works really great for you that you wanna share, comment below because I'm sure any mom who's struggling right now want to watch this video read comments and try to figure out how to make it work for them so feel free to comment below uh be sure to be subscribed hit the little bell right by the subscribe button so you're notified every time we post a video and until next time bye guys lila trying to calm kai you're so sweet you're the best big sister ever I don't know what you want.